Uh, Welcome back to the Sign of Good Health podcast. Today I'm talking with Ken Valdivia. He's a YouTuber who does autism stuff and also martial arts. So I thought I definitely got to reach out to this guy. <laughs> so, um, Kenny, do you want to start with just kind of telling us the, the story about how you got diagnosed? Thank you, Alex, for having me on your podcast. Hello, everybody. My name is Kenneth Gusport. I was born and raised in Los Angeles, California, August 14th, 1995. I was diagnosed, I know for sure, as a toddler. Growing up, I was just all over the place. I was of the newest product that came out. I just wanted to concentrate it. And at the same time, taking no for an answer was just not an easy task for me. I would wind my behinds off every time I didn't get what I wanted, especially when I was three, four, five years old. And I was felt ashamed of who I was. I would always constantly bicker at my mom, asking her why I couldn't be in the other classes with the other kids, being that I had to move around various times to many other schools especially throughout my elementary and junior high years, being that I was higher functioning on the spectrum and the classes I was in all throughout the public schools were kids leering towards the lower ending of the spectrum. Mm -hmm. And they needed, it was hard for them to find a place that has the the exact pace that I'm at. I mean, I'm in the middle. I can't be in the general ed classes because the learning would have been too hectic for me. But at the same time, I was a faster learner than all the other kids in the special needs classes. So just, it was a huge roller coaster ride trying to find the ride fit for me. Um, How would you say your family handled, like how did you being diagnosed um, affect your family, like collectively growing up? Collectively growing up, you know, my mom's oldest sister, she used to get agitated with me a lot about a lot of things. I, I would talk her ear off about a lot of things and she just didn't have the patience for me. And when I didn't get what I want, you know, I would throw a lot of hissy fits and she would just lose, lose it on me. So yeah, she was, she was a scary person and she smoked a lot. So I felt like I was in hell because I just don't like the the smoking yeah. and yeah. But at the, at the same time, my mom's a youngest sister. She was a very down to earth and she understood me a lot better. She didn't give me a hard time. And, you know, she played a lot of music that I liked and yeah, she had more patience for me more than my mom's older sister did. That's for sure. And I always preferred hanging out with my uh, other aunt, my mom's youngest sister the most. Okay. So what about like, were you able to make friends throughout childhood? Throughout childhood? Yeah. It was a roller coaster I went came to making friends just at play dates and other stuff. Kids would disperse from me. You know, I would just talk their ear off about my interests and other stuff and get, you know, basically telling me to get lost and whatnot and just like shoving and name calling and what have you. So was there a uh, I guess, how would you rate your, your social skills level now, I guess, an adult? As an adult, I say like I'm at, at like a seven and a half, but back then I was like at a two. Okay. Yeah. So uh, do you know, because like for myself, I had a similar thing where I feel like I grew a lot social skills wise, um, but I've had trouble kind of if I had to reverse engineer it, like how I would teach someone like on the spectrum or whatever. So have you, do you know anything beneficial that you did to learn social skills and get better at it? Well, I mean, throughout my childhood and adolescence, my mom signed me up for numerous amounts of social skills groups and whatnot. And then the one that I really felt the most beneficial from was during my adolescence was a group in the San Fernando Valley called Lunch Groups. I forget what it stands for, but it runs by this professional doctor named Bruce Gale. And yeah, they would basically teach you some manner skills, how to eat at the table, how to be polite to to the waiters and waitresses. And 
yeah, we just like work on a lot of different projects in his group. And uh, after group, we would always go out to dinner at the local restaurants and, you know, to teach us how to, you know, have proper manners and etiquette when it comes to dining out. So that was, I felt was very beneficial for me because I definitely got much better with uh, my table manners and you know, courteous when in a restaurant environment. Okay. So you said something interesting. Um, you had a line about feeling ashamed of who you were. Like, is that something you still struggle with? No. I mean, that's the whole reason I make these testimonials because I want people to know that they're not alone and it's okay not to be okay because there's just so much turmoil going on in this world, especially nowadays. And for so long, I just kept my condition under wraps. It wasn't about until mid 2018 that I decided to unwrap it and tell people that I was close with, you know, people outside of my fam extended family and yeah. Yeah. Even more people in my extended family. Yeah, I mean, there's still some people in my family that I estranged myself from to this day because I just don't agree with their views and just like they're not good influences. So, yeah, I still estranged myself from those certain people in my extended families from either side of the family. But yeah. Yeah, that's really interesting just because like uh, it makes me think about with growing up uh the uh, i'll call it the autistic perspective and when you're trying to learn social skills you have to kind of find that balance of following the world's rules versus you know being who you are and so it it seems like i just remember being basically feeling like everything i do and think is wrong so what you're saying with like the estranged family and you're setting that boundary um is that something you feel like you had to learn or were you able to pretty easily just kind of block them out of your life? Well, yeah, I was pretty easily able to block them out of my life because there's just uh, some things that they do that I don't approve of them and I want nothing to, to do with. So yeah. And, uh, you know, just also I've been living independently. I don't know how much of my testimonials you saw, but you know, it's like my YouTube channel is a personal diary. I talk about what's going on in my life and my routine and my goals, why I want to accomplish. And especially in the past couple of years with uh, COVID, the silver lining, being able to reach out to people, feel it with some favorite franchises of all time has been pretty cool. And, you know, I just want to continue to impact the lives of others, no matter what industry they're in. And yeah, that's why I love making these testimonials. And yeah. yeah. So you, you said you were artsy growing up. So what, what um i guess what got you into videos or was there phases of different mediums just all the bullying and the traumas that i've endured growing up you know being exposed to a lot of drugs and stuff like that my parents you know were both big on a lot of uh, meth and other types of drugs and you know my dad at times he would have friends of his come over and i'd be on the other side of the room just like playing away on the computer I mean, this before YouTube existed, I was just like, you know, looking at, uh, you know, images on the computer, just playing like a uh, good old uh, computer games and whatnot. And then they'd be like doing stuff, I don't know, like smoking weed or what have you. And, you know, I've seen people like, uh, you know, getting pretty drunk, pretty wasted. And, you know, my dad getting into scuffles with people and yeah, you know, just like also at the same time, like uh, my grandparents raised me a lot in my childhood too, because, you know, my mom was hanging out with the wrong crowd. So I was under my grandparents' wings a lot, as well as my uh, aunt's wings as well. Sure. So uh, you said you've been living independently. So what what have you found helpful for kind of navigating the world with autism? Uh, You know, just, uh, I like to, my, about a year and a half ago or so, my parents moved out out of state and, you know, I tried it for a while with them and, you know, I just wasn't feeling it where they moved to. My connections were out there and, you know, it was just difficulty making friends and, you know, like, and I just didn't know where to go. And a lot of the things I'm interested in just didn't really interest me. And, you know, I like to spend it with my, with the friends that I've made over the years. And so that's why I moved back to, moved back out of their house. And then 
know, did some room searching and whatnot. And yeah, you know, I definitely want to continue to tackle these challenges. Yeah. Well, and I think that was a, a concern for myself and my parents early on in life is just that that question of like, is Alex going to be able to live independently? Um, is that is that something your family had? So, so. So, so. Okay. Yeah. And also, you know, I want to be closer to a lot of my friends out here and especially my mom's youngest sister, my, uh, my other aunt, because uh, my, my mom's oldest sister and, and my grandma on my mom's side, they, they both live in a different state as well. So I'm pretty much the only family that my, my mom's youngest sister has out here. So, and she's going through a lot of turmoil herself right now. And I want to be close to her. Okay. Yeah. So I think we can transition into one of our, both our favorite hobbies. Like, so when, when did you get into martial arts? I know you kind of made a video about it, but. Yeah, as I said in my uh, testimony, you know, I got into martial arts. I did some uh, classes like when I was like at least uh, eight or nine or whatnot, you know, when I was visiting my grandparents in Arizona from time to time over the summers and I've gone to like their local community colleges where they've had like martial arts sessions and I really got into martial arts more and more in my adolescence because like that's when I revisited the karate kid when I was a teenager you know to get the feel for it and then eventually in my uh, high school years getting exposed to the UFC and all the undisputed video games which I still play to this day um, yeah so you know, that now I'm like a UFC encyclopedia. Those video games made me an encyclopedia of the UFC. So I know all the fighter stats and their records and who they fought and yeah, what records they hold. So, you know, and mm -hmm. yeah, that's what got me into it. And also, you know, a lot of action movies, case in point, the born identity, the ultimatum, John wick, best of the best, what have you. So, yeah. Yeah. So, and then what kind of benefits have you had with the martial arts? Like, has it helped with autism stuff? Yeah, you know, I've uh, achieved a black belt. I got back in uh, 2017 at this place that I was going through for like about eight years. And it's pretty cool, you know, building a community. But when I got my black belt, I still was keeping it under wraps because that was in 2017. And like I said, I unwrapped my diagnosis in the middle of 2018. Mm -hmm. And that's in Sorry. karate. Oh uh, yeah, kickboxing. Kickboxing. Okay. Yeah. So, uh, what kind of do you have any kind of goals or beyond black belt with like martial arts? Well, you know, just really like you know, uh, keep up with it, and you know, I'd love to definitely like do segments with some of my favorite martial arts that I've watched throughout the years, and you know, definitely like do some like sit down interviews with them or you know like sparring sessions or what have you you know just like do some fun experiments for my channel sure yeah um and then what about goals for like youtube and other areas because you've you've already connected with quite a few people you're showing me your, your different videos yeah you know i just i want you know to help other people's voices be heard and you know just uh show that be, these people are capable of doing what they set to do and you know, being out of high school for nearly 10 years now, trying to find what my purpose is, yeah, it's frustrating. And all, all throughout, you know, changing my major from this to that to this to that, and it's frustrating, you know, I just decide, okay, enough's enough, and that's why I decided making these testimonials. Oh, okay, yeah. So I, I had kind of a different path where I kind of knew – three things I wanted to be doing were like exercise science and like uh, writing and uh, video stuff. And that's kind of what I've stuck with even 10 plus years out of high school too. Um, and it's just figuring out which balance of those is going to get me the most of what I want. So, because um, I'm actually doing physical therapy assistant school right now and after working in journalism and stuff. So, gotcha. Um, so I got two more kind of big picture autism related questions. Um, so what are your thoughts about like a cure for autism? Like, is that something you'd want? Um, I don't know. No, not necessarily. I don't really 
Yeah, you know, I, I'm the whole point of these testimonials is to show people that I'm not ashamed of who I am and, you know, that it's okay to not be okay and, you know, sharing some personal in depth, you know, about what I've been through in my life. And yeah, I mean, I have really no preference about, it, but if anyone wants a cure, then I'm not going to judge them. If they yeah. want it, it's on them. Yeah, it's hard because like for people like us that are on the higher functioning end, it's it's more of what's called an invisible disability where there's there's struggles, but then there's also the super severe autistic cases where you have like nonverbal people or people that can like don't really even have control of their own body. So and that's yep. that can get really hard on like the whole family on top of the, the individual. So mm -hmm. so you know it's hard to know what to think and what the answer is. Yeah, exactly. Touche. So, so the other one is if you could like wave a magic wand and make people understand one thing about autism, what would it be? Wave a magic wand and uh, people understand like, yeah, just basically, you know, want to be seen and want to be heard and, you know, just want people, especially of the opposite sex to understand like, hey, I don't mean any harm or whatnot i know my antics can kind of freak you out but you know i just want i just want to be accepted and you know i don't, I don't i'm not trying to be pretend to be someone i'm not and that's that one i'm all about the whole point of another point i make these testimonials yeah that's a really good message about just authenticity kind of solves a lot of problems because then on the one hand that kind of filters people if they like you or not and you're not having to pretend to be somebody else they just that you know that they like you for who you are yeah. okay, so you have to temper that with a level of fitting in because you need to fit in so um so i think that's kind of what i had for for questions so so thanks for being on the show and um you can check out ken's youtube channel it's ken valdivia um, he's got yeah. lots of different stuff. He's got martial arts. He's got autism, like authors and musicians and his own life. So lots of good stuff. Yes, everybody. Um, yeah, I just want to continue to change this world. And please uh, give me a, give me a subscription. Check me out. Don't be a stranger. You could uh, put a comment in the comment section. Let me know what you think of that respective video that you saw. And yeah, spread the word and you know, just help people understand and let's continue to get on other radars and see where things go from here. Thanks for being on the show.